It is therefore time for members' statements. Member statements. The member from Vivian Carleton. Thank you very much, Speaker. I have long been an advocate for the 1,000 rural Eastern Ontario jobs at the Rideau Carleton Raceway and Slots. As a major rural Ottawa and Eastern Ontario employer, the Rideau Carleton has been under attack by the OLG effectively since 2012. First, when the Liberal government went to war on the horse racing industry by cancelling the slots at racetrack program, and now with the OLG unfairly facing, uh, forcing local slot workers out of their jobs. For the past two and a half months, slot workers at the Rideau Carleton Raceway have been locked out. They make less than most smaller casinos across the province, and during the, that time, they have been out in the cold, quite literally. It is massively cold in the city of Ottawa. It's minus 42 degrees Celsius on some days and a blizzard when it's not that cold. They have seen at the OLG that their revenues during that same period of time have decreased by $1 million compared to this time last year. That tells me, along with the 2016 Ontario budget, that the OLG and the Liberals are intent on threatening the Rideau Carlton's existence so that they continue with their ill-conceived modernization plan for gambling and possibly build a downtown Ottawa casino, which is at odds, significant odds, with those of us who actually represent the community. So I'm here to remind the OLG and the Liberals I'm watching, and it's time for them to Thank start you. taking my constituents seriously. Thank, Thank you. you. Further member statements? The member from Toronto, Dan Forth. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, it's been five long years since the untimely death of my constituent, Dimitri Skalos, at Toronto General Hospital on February 21, 2011. The questions to ministers of health inside and outside this House remain unanswered. This is the seventh time since 2012 I've risen in place to recognize the plight of the Skalos family and their efforts to find answers after the death of Dimitri Skalos. This 92-year-old patient was treated as a bed blocker and presented with a bill from a hospital for 18, over $18,000, a bill any hospital has no legal ability to collect. An $18,000 bill, which a legal expert on seniors' issues, Judith Wall, has, been, has said as a charge that shows that someone is trying to act in a threatening way. Dimitra was placed under unreasonable stress after receiving her bill and died in a weakened state shortly after an infected patient was moved into her room. One of Dimitra's daughters, Maria, with the support of her family, have for five long years asked for answers. They petitioned this legislature with over 10,000 names over the five years, and still they wait today. Dimitra Descalos deserved better. Her family deserved better. Maria Descalos has been told that her mother's cause would be one of the first to be considered by the new patient ombudsman. The family waits to see if this will prove to be the case. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Newmarket, Aurora. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in the House today uh, to highlight a great urban asset in my riding of Newmarket, Aurora. That's uh, Newmarket's Riverwalk Commons. The project transformed an eight-acre downtown parking lot adjacent the Holland River into a recreational hub for the town of Newmarket and York Region. The design sought to make local and regional connections by integrating Newmarket's historic downtown with links to Holland River and Ferry Lake. Right. Riverwalk Commons hums with activity now. The centre is particularly active on Saturdays when Newmarket's farmer's market is set up. Local farmers show up to sell produce and the kids are there because there are so many activities. Great. Just beyond the market, you're likely to find locals enjoying a walk along the Tom Taylor Trail. Indeed, Riverwalk Commons has something to offer all ages, whether it's a space for skating on an artificial pad in the winter or cooling off in the water pad on hot summer's day, or simply a place where neighbours can meet at the farmer's market. The success of Riverwalk Commons uh, has, as planned, spread to Newmarket's downtown core. Main Street Newmarket is becoming a gastronomic centre of York Region, offering a variety of culinary experiences. Mr. Speaker, Riverwalk Commons is everything that good urban planning should be. The famous Canadian planner Jane Jacobs said, cities have the capability of providing something for everybody only because and only when they are created by everybody. Riverwalk Commons embodies this vision, Mr. Speaker. It builds civic pride. 
Thank you very much. The member, get further member statements. The member from Whitby, Oshawa. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to acknowledge with uh, sadness the passing on February 21st of my good friend and mentor, Bill Guthrie. Bill was born on August the 18th, Mr. Speaker, in 1923 on the family homestead in Whitby, and he and his family, Jackie, were married for 62 years. 62 years, Mr. Speaker, and they raised their family on the homestead. And Bill and Jackie were longstanding members of Audley United Church until its closure in 2004. Bill was the past president of the Ontario Cattlemen's, Cattlemen's Association and a lifelong member of uh, Compton Masonic Lodge where I was a master and Bill was also a member of the Order of the Eastern Star. Nice. He loved his farm, his family, and many travels with Jackie until unfortunately dementia slowly stole him from us uh, recently. He was an incredibly loyal friend and a great citizen of my riding of Whitby, Oshawa. He'll be sadly missed, and I want to acknowledge the importance of his passing today and uh, his passing to my family as well. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Wellington. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I'd like to dedicate my statement today to uh, a horse called Whip It Good. Uh, no, not the 1980 number one hit by Devo, but rather a 12-year-old horse who has done more than just earn his keep at Dechella Stables in my riding of Welland. The stables were run by a constituents of mine, Jim Dechellis and his son Nino, Nino and a longtime friend and activist, Michelle Sinclair, uh, who helps to maintain them. Jim expanded his sideline of owning and training business when Atlas Steels closed uh, in 2003. He took up harness racing when he had trouble finding work early on in his career. He's been a native of Welland for 66 years, and after almost 20 years at Atlas Steels, he and his son Nino purchased the horse for just under $5,000. Why is Whippet so special? He's fast approaching his 50th career win, as well as almost a million in lifetime earnings in 340 starts and 131 top free finishes. In English, Whippet would have been the equivalent of a 45-year-old baseball player with a 500 career home run or a 45-year-old hockey player netting 500 goals. After 11 years, Whippet, now 14, is being retired but has become not only a part of the DeCellis extended family, but earns recognition everywhere, a part of uh, my well and riding. Uh, congratulations to Jim, to Nino, and to Whip It Good. Thank you. For the member's statements, the member from Mississauga Springdale. No, sorry, Brampton Springdale. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I take this opportunity to pay tribute to former regional councillor, Mr. Paul Anthony Pileshi, or Papa Pileshi, as people in the community called him. Brampton has lost a friend and a leader with the passing of Paul Pileshi. He was a leader on council, and when he spoke, others listened. He will always be remembered by his large extended Irish, Italian, and Canadian family and friends. He was elected to Brampton Council in 1985 and served on a number of boards and committees, including pre the president of Peel Regional Living and as a paramedic service board member. His sense of humour was always pleasant and regularly appreciated by his fellow council members, community members and fellow elected officials. In his public life, Paul Pileshi was a champion for the residents of Wards 2 and 6, including his, life, his long standing challenge against an OMB ruling that permitted a large condo development in a community of single family homes within his riding. In his personal life, he was a fixture at family sporting events, often coaching from the stands. He enjoyed going to Brampton Battalions and Brampton Beast hockey games. He passionately rode his Harley trike in support of bike nights and toy, um, Toys for Tots rides. Paul loved to fish and proudly encouraged his grandchildren to also participate. Paul worked closely with his colleagues to create a, a strong foundation for a thriving and sustainable city and region. After he had retired, he continued to be an advocate for the Peel Housing Corporation and Peel Living, where he was very proud of the public housing at present, but always wanted to do more for his community. On behalf of the Legislature, I extend my condolences to his wife, Patricia, 
his daughter Michelle, and his son, Councillor Michael Pileshi. Okay, Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. For the member's statements, the member from Huron Bruce. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Today, I would like to congratulate Heather East, a young writer from South Huron. She attends the South Huron District High School, and she'll be honoured next Monday at Speaker Levesque's Book Award Ceremony. The Speaker's Award for Young Writers celebrates the talents of young Ontarians who have demonstrated excellence in writing. Last fall, students in grades 7, 7 to 12 from across the province submitted short stories and personal essays on a topic of choice. The selection committee marked entries according to style, originality, general presentation, as well as spelling and grammar. This is the first year that, this, that Speaker Levesque has launched this award, and I am proud that a writer from my community is being recognized in its pioneering year. Heather's submission, a short fictional story titled Mistakes, clearly stood out amongst the overwhelming number of entries submitted by students from across Ontario. I'm equally thrilled to be celebrating her in terms of the group of artists from the riding of Huron Bruce. Heather is joining a gifted group of writers, actors, poets, singers, craftsmen, and painters from the riding. And speaking of painters, if you haven't taken the opportunity, I'd also like to encourage you to keep an eye out for the paintings by George Agnew Reed, an artist from Huron Bruce, whose works are prominently featured throughout Queen's Park. I look forward to welcoming Heather next Monday when she visits Queen's Park, and I wish her the very best during the final competition. Have a good day, and we'll see you next Monday, Heather. Thank you. I guess I can't throw the member out this afternoon. <laughs> Further member statements, the member from Barrie. Thank you, Speaker. I can't tell you how exciting it was in Barrie and all of Simcoe County when, the day after our government's amazing announcement about tuition for students, that the great partnership between Georgian College and Lakehead University made another announcement to make post-secondary education more accessible for students. Georgian leads the way in terms of partnerships with the university, and Friday's announcement solidifies this fact. I was thrilled to be present as Georgian announced 20 new degree programs and transfer pathways in partnership with Lakehead University. The degrees being offered over the next five years include business administration, health management, gerontology, and hopefully engineering, all programs that will be in demand by the employers of the future. These programs, Mr. Speaker, like all others at Georgian College, are career-focused and will prepare students for, to contribute much to our great province as we move forward. I echo Georgian College President Mary Lynn West Moynes when she says, Georgian College students will graduate job-ready and our communities will have the workforce they need to grow our economy. Looking ahead, Mr. Speaker, Georgian College will also be assisting some of the students affected by the recent announcement that Laurentian University will no longer be offering programs in Barrie. The college will be accommodating first- and second-year business and commerce students to ensure that they finish their degrees. I congratulate Georgian College, through the University Partnership, for their continuing leadership in education. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Halton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to rise today and speak about the 2016 Ontario budget. I want to congratulate Minister Souza on releasing an impressive budget that includes free tuition for low-income families, $345 million in new hospital funding, and more money for affordable housing, all while on track to eliminate the deficit. But with International Women's Day right around the corner, Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to speak about the progress Ontario is making in assisting women. I recently held a roundtable discussion with women's groups from the Halton region, and we talked about a range of issues, including ways to help single mothers and women who've left abusive situations. A key component to beginning a new chapter in their lives is education. The budget announcement of free tuition for students with a family income of $50,000 or less will offer many mature women and single parents a second chance. It will help single mothers send their kids to school, but also allow low-income women to go to school themselves. In addition, the affordable housing piece, raising funding to $178 million, is also important to help these women get the support they need. 
Ontario also now has a targeted strategy to end violence against Indigenous women. Over three years, Ontario will spend $100 million mostly on support for families of Indigenous women who are three times more likely to experience violence and be murdered than other women in Ontario. I'm proud of the work the government has done to help women, Mr. Speaker, and I look forward to keeping the conversation going. Thank you. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It is now